This is Matthew McConaughey. Natalie Portman. James Patterson. Michael Ian Black. And you are listening to Five Questions with Dan Chabell. Patrick, welcome to Five Questions. Thank you. Thank you. Glad to be here. How did your parents give you a normal childhood so you could avoid the childhood star curse? Gosh, all, you're, you're coming out blazing. I like. I it. always do. Yeah, the first question, question is always <laughs> the toughest it's a good one. one. <laughs> it's a good one. Well, it's it's funny that you say that because I, you know, I think one of the things that was built in for me was I, I'm not the quintessential child star that some are. You know, my first movie was Sandlot, basically my first job, and I was 13. So I was actually a teenager. And so I, I didn't start at five or six. So I already had that going for me. You know, I, I had a pretty normal childhood in Boston uh, till I was 13, played sports, you know, regular friends, that whole thing. And then I do credit my parents for the next phase. You know, they they were just there for me. My mom always had said she's, I forget what it is, but she's like a bird ready to swoop in if needed, but keeps a bird's eye view and lets me live my life. And I don't know where she got that, but I always thought, that's a good way to parent and kind of something I try to do. I fail miserably a lot, but I try to, you know, just let my kids do their thing. I like that a lot because it's almost like you can make some mistakes, but if things get too far off the deep end, she'll come in and ensure that you're still safe, protected and continue to move forward in your acting journey. Yeah, exactly. She'll swoop in. And she did, you know, with the, that Irish East coast fist, <laughs> don't you mess with me, you know? So I, I had a nice balance of everything. In what ways have you kept the spirit of the Sandlot alive through all your endeavors? Well, I think it's been done for me uh, because of the popularity of the film. You know, it never ceases to amaze me. There's nothing like three generations coming up to you and saying this movie means so much to all of us. You know, you have a father and his daughter and his daughter's new five-year-old kid who was born 20 years after the movie came out 25 years you know so that has kept it alive for me because everyone i meet you know so many people have seen it and it's really it's you know it's humbling and it's an honor to be to be associated with something like that uh, i think how i keep it alive is you know it's it's a cool thing to to have in you know my um whatever to have in my list of credits. It's um, it's a great, fun film. It's like The Goonies for me was just this movie that no matter when it comes on, everything stops and I have to watch this movie for the next 90 minutes. And uh, it, I think it's like that for a lot of people. So, and then, hey, I'm, you know, starting this clothing line with the name. So keeping it alive. Yeah, let's so let's talk about the new clothing line, Hambino Athletics. Yeah. What are your hopes of, using this brand to kind of expand everything you do and, and really make a positive impact. Well, I saw that so many people had had these shirts, you know, with, with me on them. So I knew that there was this built in appreciation. <laughs> that must be interesting. It. it is interesting. It is. It's uh it's fun though. It's, it's cool. And you know, there's different variations. And so I've always had the thought to do it, but I never, I didn't really want to just make a merch line, you know, and it's not merch is great, but I'm, you know, not on the road as a band. So I wanted to make uh, a clothing line that I would wear that actually is high quality and, and really nice and comfortable. And so I partnered up with the creative director of the Mighty Company and her name's Jesse Wilner. She, the Mighty Company is this very successful uh, female jacket brand and it's very fashionable and it's cool. And, you know, it's, it, it adds all of that. Um, it, it has that great aspect to it. So we kind of teamed together and she designed what I think is a very fashionable athleisure brand. And we focused really on the, the material and keeping it um, comfortable to wear and, you know, enjoyable. And it's all handmade and it's all, you know, hand cut and sewn in Los Angeles. So it's all done here and uh, we're very hands-on. So it's exciting. And, uh, you know, we obviously have the the tight the name of the the brand is Hambino, and uh, so it has some fun things to do. And I I have these old uh, these old photos of me behind the scenes that are my own photos. So we put some of those on some t shirts. So we still have a little fun with it, but uh, I think people will really respond to the actual clothing too. Yeah, and I think that the consumer wants comfort now. 
You know, you have yes. so many people who are like working from home and like don't want to exactly. really put suits on anymore and just want to be relaxed. Like, you oh. know, I'm in shorts right now. Like, you can't I'm see sure that. You I don't even, you know, like, I don't yeah. dress up. I'm not wearing a, a suit and tie for anything anymore, uh, for the most yeah. part, unless it's an event. And I think we just have a more relaxed culture. And I do think that people are putting more of a premium on quality material. Yeah. Well, there's a nice pair of cotton shorts that uh, you you can will will get you, and they're extremely comfortable. I've had a sample for the last three weeks, and I've worn it probably every single day at my house. They're great. Yeah, you need to represent the brand. You know, if you're wearing know, it, that means it's good enough for you. You know, if it you're... all arrives tomorrow. Yeah. So my my joke was, <laughs> I had an internship back in the day at Reebok, and yeah. I wore Nikes one day, and I got punished. <laughs> <laughs> And that's when the internship ended, I'm sure. That no, it. no, but it was, it was definitely a weird conversation that I had to yeah. have. Yeah, you got to you gotta own and, and you gotta rep it. Band. Absolutely. Yeah. And you're a father. What life and career lessons do you intend to pass on to your son? Yeah, I mean, I have two boys now, um, five and a half and two and a half. So, you know, I think one of the things that I'm always, that I always think about being an actor is it's always something I wanted to do. It was never something that my mom or my dad pushed me into doing. Um, and I, I would always just want to impart that on them as far as a career, as, as long as it's something that you want. And then my parents v- supported me, you know, uh, to do anything that I wanted. So, of course, they supported that. Uh, so I think I think that's something that's really important to me, whatever they want to do, as long as it's their choice. and uh, And then I'll support it. Um, and then I guess life advice, you know, I think the golden rule says it the best, you know, treat others the way you want to be treated. And I think in this day and age, we're, we're losing that a little bit. And, and it's just, it's hard to do. It's, it's such a easy, easy thing to write or not write, but it, it's such a, you, you read it and you go, this is no problem, but it takes some doing this and it takes, uh, you know, some focus and, it's a great thing to just think about. Would I like this being done to me when I do it? Because there's a, there's some meanness out there that needs to chill out and we need to get back to some of the good values of being human because generally we're all good people. Uh, so I, I think just, you know, making them a good person and helping them to, to be that those dudes. Yeah, and everyone has their own issues going on. And sometimes you can't see what those issues are because they're in their head. And they're not, they, they might be behaving a certain way, but you have no idea that, you know, they might have no like lost a parent or I know, there's man. all these things that can trigger someone and we have yeah. to be more empathetic. I totally agree. That's great advice. That is a really good point. And I've thought that too. I mean, it could be as small as a bad morning with the family and it set them off wrong, or it could be something as terrible, like having just lost a parent. Yeah. Like you don't know what's going on in that person's world and you got to swallow it because you can get frustrated, but it's uh, it's a really good point you made. And what's your best piece of career advice? Well, I, okay, my gosh, my best piece of career advice. I think, I think what I said earlier, I'm going to give you one A and one B. I think what I said earlier is just make sure that it's something you want to do and something you're doing for yourself. But one B is um, Brian Cranston, and I'm fully paraphrasing and probably butchering it, but he said this great thing about being an actor and the audition process, because no matter what there's all, and actually this could go to any career because there is always an audition process for everything you do, whether it's a job interview or um, a clothing line, people have to like your clothes. So I think what he said is you go in and you give it your all. And then once you, as long as you know that you gave it your all, everything that you could give to that role or to whatever you're doing, you walk out of that room. And when that, the second that door closes, that's it. You forget about it and it's gone because at that point, that's out of your hands going into there. Everything was in your control, but now it has nothing to do with you anymore and you can't take anything personally. And it's actually true because I've been on the other side of this. I've cast it. I produced a movie and it is true. Like I've seen people come in that were so talented, but they didn't play off of the person I already hired well or, or things like that. And it, it's never something to take personal. So I thought that was fantastic advice. And I, I try and use it myself. I think that's great advice. So thank you so much for sharing it and for being on the show. Yeah. Thanks for having me. 